You can learn a lot about a cannon based on its markings. Today we're going to take a look at several of Fort Ticonderoga's British cannons to explore the meanings of the various markings. First, we will examine the ciphers, or the emblems that represent the reigning monarch at the time when the cannon was cast. Next, we will calculate the weight of the cannon barrels based on a three number code engraved on the barrel. And finally, we will identify locations where cannons were cast as well as their makers based on the letters or initials present on the right side. A cannon is comprised of many different parts, including the second reinforce, where you will find the cipher, the first reinforce, where you will find its weight, and the trunnion, where you will find the maker's mark. The trunnion, which supports the cannon on its carriage, features a maker's mark on its end. The first reinforce is the part of the gun closest to the breech or the back of the cannon where the gunpowder explodes. It is the thickest part of the cannon to resist the force of the gunpowder and has the weight of the cannon marked ahead of the breech. The cipher of the cannon is located on the second reinforce, which is thinner than the first as the gunpowder has less explosive force by the time it reaches this section of the cannon. If we take a look at the cipher on the second reinforce of this cannon, we see the letters GR intertwined in script. Woven through the G is the number three. This indicates that the cannon was cast under the reign of King George III, who ruled Great Britain from 1760 until his death in 1820. Unlike his predecessors, King George III was the first of the Hanoverian kings to be born in Great Britain and speak English as a first language. On this canon, you can see another example of the King George III cipher. Beginning with the reign of Henry VIII, the first initial of the monarch's name was followed by the letter R, which stands for Rex, the Latin word for king, or Regina, the Latin word for queen. This much older canon features the Tudor Rose, which predated the King George ciphers. The red and white colors of the Tudor Rose, also known as the Union Rose, represent the unification of the warring House of Lancaster and House of York in 1485. The House of Stuart continued to use the Tudor Rose as their cipher until the end of Queen Anne's reign in 1714. This canon was cast before that year. Another marking you will find on a canon besides the royal cipher is the broad arrow. The broad arrow was used as early as 1554 to denote an item as property of the British military and is still in use today. This arrow can be found in various places on the cannon, including the top of the first reinforce and the cascabel, which is the round knob at the back of the cannon used for lifting to aim or move the cannon. Cannons were rated by the weight of the shot they fire, which is determined by the size of the bore and not by the size of the cannon. Though cannons that fired larger shot were generally heavier, the weight of a cannon also varied based on whether they were made of iron or bronze and whether it was a heavy, medium, or lightweight pattern. British cannons were typically weighed and marked in hundredweights and fractions thereof. Rather than 100 pounds, as the name might suggest, a hundredweight equals 112 modern pounds, and thus, a quarter hundredweight is 28 modern pounds. A cannon's weight is represented by three numbers separated by dashes. For example, A-B-C. The first digit tells us the number of whole hundredweights. You can calculate the total whole hundredweights by multiplying A times 112. The second digit tells us the number of quarter hundredweights. Calculate that by multiplying B times 28. The third digit tells us the individual pounds, which is simply C times one. With this system, we can calculate the weight of the cannon barrel using the following formula. The quantity A times 112 plus the quantity B times 28 plus the quantity C times one equals the weight of the cannon barrel. Remember that A is the number of hundredweights, so we will multiply that number by 112. B is the number of quarter hundredweights, so we will multiply that number by 28. C is the number of individual pounds, so we will multiply that by one. In this case, the first number, A, 
is 16. The second number, b, is 2, and the third number, c, is 19. When we plug these into our formula, 16 times 112 gives us 1,792. 2 times 28 gives us 56, and 19 times 1 is, of course, 19. Add them together, and you get a grand total of 1,867 pounds. Just for reference, one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. If we do the same thing with this 24-pounder cannon, we will find the weight of the barrel. Here the first number, A, is 49, the second number, B, is 1, and the third number, C, is 16. When we plug these into our formula, 49 times 112 gives us 5,488. 1 times 28 gives us 28, and 16 times 1 gives us 16. Add them together and you get a grand total of 5,532 pounds. Now let's look at one final six pounder, which is slightly larger in size than the first cannon, which was also a six pounder. Despite being different sizes, these two cannons fire the same size shot. Here the first number, A, is 19. The second number, B, is three. And the third number, C, is two. When we plug these into our formula, 19 times 112 gives us 2,128. 3 times 28 gives us 84, and 2 times 1 gives us 2. Add them together, and you get a total of 2,214 pounds. Casting cannons was an artisan craft in the 18th century. Master founders oversaw the melting of iron and pouring it into three-part molds set into the ground. With the weight of this hot melted iron, this work was tricky and dangerous. Letters on the end of the trunnion were like the signature of the master of the foundry. This cannon has a maker's mark, IC, which indicates this gun was cast by John Churchill. In the 18th century, it was common for the letter I to be used to represent the letter J in abbreviations. The Weald was a region in the southern English county of Sussex. Family foundries in this region specialized in casting iron cannons since the Tudor dynasty back in the 16th century. This cannon bears the mark B, which was one of the more common trunnion markings and indicates that this gun was cast at the Breed Foundry near the town of Battle in Sussex. Thank you for participating in our artillery marking activity. Your participation allows us to continue our mission of preservation, education, and fostering active discussions about the impact of the past on present and future generations. Please feel free to contact us with any questions.